You look around, seeing your party in shambles. The paladin is on the floor, wheezing as she slowly pushes herself up while ignoring the massive wound on her side. The rogue is hiding behind a nearby marble pillar, his eyes darting back and forth as he tries to find any possible route to escape, knowing the moment he moves he'll be spotted. Across the room, the cleric shouts in pain as the massive pit fiend standing above him drives its horrific spiked mace into his side, leaving him limp and lifeless on the floor. All of this because you couldn't keep the monster in place. Slowly, it turns around, its piercing glowing eyes boring deep into your soul. Is this the best you have? It growls as a sickening, twisted grin appears on its face. I expected more. This is pathetic. You feel heat rush through your veins as you force yourself back to your feet, the room around you turning red as you wipe blood from your eyes. Pathetic is the word I'd use for you, not us. You growl as the fire burning in your chest grows more and more, becoming an all-consuming inferno that boils your very blood. It cackles. Oh, for where I'm standing, it doesn't seem that way. Yeah? Give me 30 seconds. You charge at the beast, your pure, unquenchable fury propelling you forwards into one-on-one -on -one combat. Roll for initiative. Chances are, if you're needing a video to convince yourself to play a barbarian, you fit into one of three categories. One, you've already decided to play your 12th barbarian, and you just need some good excuses so when you hand in your character sheet and your DM looks at you judgmentally as they ask, Really? Barbarian? Again? You can be equipped with a brand new set of excuses to convince them to let you do this all over again. Or, two, you've never played D&D before, and you have a game at the end of this week, causing you to frantically find any resources to help you know what to play. And if that's the case, stick around, because I could probably help with that. Or, three, you hate playing barbarians, because they have only ever been seen as big, dumb, childish brutes who are pretty one-note outside of am dumb, can smash. And you've only clicked this video out of some sort of morbid curiosity. Either way, regardless of why you're wanting to watch this video, you're curious about the barbarian, and what unique things it could offer you. So let's talk about that. The Barbarian in D&D 5th Edition fits in a very special role amongst the various classes, as it's pretty much the premier class to play for someone who kinda wanted to be a fighter, but the fighter just wasn't enough. Sure, the fighter can do a lot of stuff, attack a lot, basically fit the trope of the handsome action star who always seems to rise above the occasion and just barely complete their mission, but come on, there's fighting things, and then there's owning the battlefield with your pure force of presence. And ultimately, when I find anyone playing a Barbarian, it's usually for that reason. They wanted to play a fighter, but they really just wanted to play a fighter with presence and ferocity. Someone who didn't just fight, but got so lost in their own rage that they go past the point of just fighting. In a battle, they're living. When I look at them, the barbarian seems to me to be the sorcerer to the fighter's wizard. While the fighter hones their skills, practices, and becomes a master of their craft and an artisan on the battlefield, the barbarian fights not through skill, but through instinct and raw emotion. Their primal energy all but consumes them until they eliminate the threat in front of them. A fighter strategizes and acts. A barbarian decimates and survives. And this main difference between the two premier martial classes is highlighted by the main feature the barbarian is based on. Rage. Rage is an awesome ability that really feels like an all-in-one powerhouse that lets the barb be as terrifying as it is, even when put alongside the other player characters. It gives extra damage, extra resistance, better strength checks, and better saving throws. I mean, it's quite literally meant to be, you hulk out and smash, but in D&D. This paired alongside the other two signature abilities that make them such a powerful warrior, unarmored defense and reckless attack, the barbarian basically comes across as an incredibly hard to kill blender of sharpened knives and pitchforks that causes every monster that could ever face up against them cower in fear while they inwardly reflect on their life decisions to try and figure out how the hell they ended up coming up against this half-naked screaming monkey man who's intent on cutting off their head to take it as a trophy. Okay, that horrifying imagery aside, all those abilities also lead to why so many people find the stereotype of the Barbarian to be tired at times. Unarmored defense, rage, and reckless attack are all awesome abilities that make you super hard to kill, and they also help you deal tons of damage. They also push the Barbarian into a little bit of a niche, and that forces them to have to put their stats in specific places or else be less than useful. The problem is, for the most part anyways, every single one of the Barbarian's abilities are strictly made for combat. And you know what? Frankly, that makes sense. The classic barbarian fantasy is the powerful warrior who gets lost in the heat of battle. However, because of that, it means if you do not optimize your stats for combat, you really feel like dead weight in the party. This is why a lot of people think that the barbarian is always played as a strong, dumb child. Because in order to be useful, you kind of have to min-max, which leads you to usually dumping intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, leading to them seeming like a brainless bag of meat. That right there is the largest reason I've heard people say they don't want to play barbarian. 
and it is understandable. They don't want to fall into that trope, but that's not why I made this video. I'm here to convince you otherwise. Let's talk about why this class is some of the most fun I've ever had. Let's talk about the true barbarian. Straight honesty, I've played the dumb barbarian stereotype before. And I had a blast. I had literally negatives in every stat, but strength, constitution, and... Charisma. Yeah, I know, I chose to dump my dexterity to take charisma, which as a barbarian can seriously hurt your armor class. But I did it because I didn't want to be the totally typical barbarian. I wanted them to be dumb, sure, but I wanted them to be a genuinely sweet and kind person who took on a different side when combat came around. <sighs> Little did I know that myself and every other barbarian player out there had the same idea. They're all dumb and sweet, but a different person in combat. But hey, I was super brand new to D&D at the time, so don't bully me. That did help me get a close and familiar look with the dumb barbarian trope, however, and I found it a ton of fun, but it's only one part of the class. I've seen a lot of other barbarians played since that time. I watched one of my players play a loud and boisterous, incredibly friendly barbarian who didn't necessarily rage, but instead just sometimes got carried away with dismantling their enemies who would dare touch their friends. Also, their rage was generally fueled by some sort of drugs, but that was, uh, it was a unique setting. I also watched one of my players play an on-the-run gladiator who was decent at fighting, but it was the demon who possessed him whenever he raged that caused the chaos that was ensued. Let me get this straight. A barbarian is defined by their rage and their ability to wreck shop in a fight. There is no getting around that. But that doesn't mean playing a barbarian is boring because it's how they react to their rage that defines the character. A character is not defined by the class. The class is just how they do things. A character is defined by their actions. So with that in mind, here's why you should play a barbarian. One, you're going to be terrifying in combat. Being able to have advantage on your attacks pretty much whenever you want, being quite possibly one of the most tanky any characters can be in 5th edition, and getting a whole host of unique and flavorful abilities thanks to whatever subclass you pick, means that when combat does come around, it's pretty much always your time to shine. And honestly, I think the Barbarian is one of the best designed classes when it comes to fulfilling its fantasy. You want to be a giant, brutish, unstoppable warrior? Barbarian is the way to go. If you've ever watched any kind of hero ensemble movie, TV show, or anything of the sort, there's always that one character that everyone else seems to either have a massive amount of respect for or even seems to fear. And if you've ever felt compelled by that sort of character, Barbarian is easily one of the best things for you to play in order to fulfill that fantasy. Especially when it comes to your character pushing past the limits other classes simply couldn't and showing their true, incredible, massive strength. This becomes especially true when you get into the higher levels and get abilities that let your rage become basically never-ending. And eventually you even get an ability where you get to tell death straight up, no. And I don't care who you are, that's amazing. But then there's point two. I think the Barbarian has one of the best built-in roleplay hooks in the game. And when you hear people talk about built-in roleplay hooks, they're almost always exclusively talking about Paladin or Warlock, which you can keep tuned for next week, by the way. And even beyond that, when you hear people talk about the stereotypical player who's only interested in combat and cares about nothing else, Barbarian is usually the class that's associated with those kinds of players. But Rage, to me at least, is so much more than a really powerful and interesting mechanic that the class gets. It's an absolute treasure trove for deep roleplay moments and inspiration for incredible character arcs. Too often I see players just sort of gloss over rage. You use it in combat, you're stronger than usual, and then it's done. Over and easy. But as I've learned from watching a lot of my players play Barbarians, there's a lot more in the roleplay to it than just that. I mean, imagine getting so furious burning with so much pure malice and rage that you literally don't feel pain and your strength practically doubles. You tear apart your enemies, destroy everything around you, and afterwards you just kinda... move on? Honestly, to me, that's missing out on something great. The best part of playing a barbarian is, as I mentioned earlier, figuring out how your character reacts to their own rage. Are they terrified of it? Do they crave it? Do they become a different person while raging entirely? Is it a special type of anger that they have cultivated over a lifetime of harm to protect them when the stress gets to be too much? Like I said, rage doesn't define your character, but their reaction how they feel about it, that's what differentiates one barbarian character from another, and I find it so interesting. It also allows you to begin thinking about what kind of arc you want your character to go through, whether they will eventually learn how to cope with it and better understand this rage, or if it will eventually try and consume them. But either way, it is a fascinating roleplay hook that could drive your character into a much richer narrative, and it helps them distinguish who their character is just outside of their class, which means you can lean into the dumb barbarian stereotype I mentioned earlier as much as you want, but it doesn't mean you're playing a one-note character. And while all that rich roleplay is going on, the class itself is mechanically strong as well, and quite a bit so. Raid, Reckless Attack, Unarmored Defense are some of the most powerful and upfront loaded abilities in the game, and you get them incredibly early on as a Barbarian. To be honest, those abilities alone make up the entirety of what makes the Barbarian the Barbarian, at least in my mind, which means that everything that comes after it is just building off the foundation of what's already there, making you feel more and more awesome and powerful. Abilities like Feral Instinct, Relentless Rage, and Indomitable Might 
are all just essentially enhancing what you are already doing and can make you seem like a total monster on the battlefield. And the subclasses, called Primal Paths by the way, in case you didn't know, can do so much into flavoring your barbarian and just seem really really freaking cool. The difference between the Path of the Ancestral Guardian and the Path of the Storm Herald is so wildly different and you could see those two side by side and easily feel like they're unique characters, despite having the same base of abilities. And that, at the end of the day, is one of the reasons I find barbarians so evocative. Because the fantasy of someone losing control in battle isn't one note. There's so many ways to do it and between flavor, roleplay, and the primal path you take, no two barbarians ever have to seem alike. And I love that. The Barbarian is a class to embody primal urges, the emotions deep within us that can't come out how we ordinarily want them to. It's a chance to experience letting loose, and playing a character who has no choice but to wear the emotions on their skin even when we can't, but we wish we could. It's a class made to be emotionally vulnerable and a terror on the battlefield. A class that lets us be strong when we show our true selves, and ultimately, isn't that something we all wish that we could have? The Barbarian, in my mind, is a chance to truly experience somebody who doesn't have to have walls up, who doesn't have to feel like if their emotions boil over, everything will be done. Because the Barbarian does that. They use their emotions to push them and drive them. And in today's day and age, it's so easy to feel like we have so much pushed inside of us and we can't do anything. The Barbarian is a chance to let that loose, to experience what that might be like, and to be able to enjoy what it's like for somebody who can't keep it all in. I know that may be a unique or special situation that only I feel, but I know there have to be other people out there that enjoy that fantasy. Sometimes it's best to just let it all out, and the Barbarian is a great way of doing it. So the next time you're picking a D&D character, take a look at the Barbarian. They might be something you enjoy. Thank you. Go out into the world. Make it your own. Don't let it get you down. And always remember to play your role. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Hey guys, thanks for coming to today's video. Uh, again, like I said, I'm going to keep on doing these uh, videos in this format until I finish all the classes. I will be getting to the Artificer and I may actually eventually do the Blood Hunter if I can really get to that. But I hope you guys all enjoyed. Uh, I really want to kind of pin down not only why mechanically these classes are great and why you should play them, but what it means to the player when it plays them. So I'm going to be focusing on that. Uh, you saw a little bit of that in the end of this video, but I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to be awesome and make the world your own. Have a great day.